。好，咁我哋揾完個 I V 之後咧，我哋就嚟睇下呢個探究嘅目的咯。原來啦，我哋就想去展示一下究竟喺個皮膚上面嘅觸覺感受器嘅密度嘅。啊，咁以下啦，邊一句呢？係做呢個實驗當中我哋要作出嘅假設呢？其實呢一條題目呢，就都係考下我哋啦，有關於呢個感受器嘅密度啦，同埋呢個感覺之間嘅關係啦。第二啦，就係點樣喺呢個感覺生理學嘅實驗當中去作出一啲假設啦。咁做呢條題目呢，有一個技能都好緊要嘅，就係、是、解讀一下實驗當中所需要嘅假設同埋背後嘅一啲含義咯。咁而家 A、B、C、D 呢，我哋就嚟做擊破咯。第一個。就話啦，個受試者咧係唔會透過個眼罩啊去偷睇嘅。喂，咁實質呢個啦，應該係屬於一個所謂嘅控制嘅措施，係你早早應該要控制，或者平時我哋去講開嗰啲 precaution 啊，嚇你首先你要留意，你要去提醒嗰個受試者嗱。你嘅老實做實驗，你唔好偷睇啊！咁所以啦，你冇得假設佢唔偷睇，因為佢根本唔應該偷睇，係咪？咁啊 B 啦。指尖咧，比起身體其他部分咧，都較為敏感嘅。嗱，呢一句説話本身自己咧係正確嘅一句説話嚟嘅，但係啦，佢只係呢個實驗嘅觀察，佢個結果，我哋係透過頭先嗰啲嘅數字，佢知得到啦。哦，原來咧指尖咧係較為敏感嘅。咁亦都借呢個機會咧去講下啦，手指尖就係最敏感啦。咁其他部分個排名又如何咧？嗱，今次咧我哋講敏感程度啊第一呢。就係、是、手指尖啦，第二就係手掌啦，第三咧就係手背啦，第四咧就係上臂嚟嘅。咁啊，由最敏感去到最唔敏感嘅話啦，咁實質用翻個頭先我哋呢個兩點觸覺測試嘅話咧，嗰、那個卡尺要相距幾多先會導致到嗰、那個，就先會令到嗰個人啊覺得，誒、欸，我得一點嘅觸覺咧。咁如果翻翻個實驗嘅結果。係點樣理解法呢？咁啊，手指尖咧就係最敏感嘅。咁啊，根據翻卡尺嘅呢個實驗嘅話咧，其實啦，當個卡尺去到呢個兩 mm 嘅話咧，先會令到嗰個人覺得，咦，我有一點嘅觸覺嘅啫。跟住啦，就去到手心咧，就係十 mm 啦，即係一 cm 啦。手背咧就係二十 mm 啦，然後上臂咧其實係四十 mm 嘅。咁我哋發現啦，隨住個敏感度嘅下降呢，即係啦，長啲嘅距離呢，都可以令到佢感受到一個一點嘅觸覺啦。咁但係話雖如此 ，B 呢句只不過係一個觀察結果嚟嘅啫嘛，係咪？何來會係假設呢？第三啦，就係、是、距離越近，就代表住嗰個感受器嘅密度就越高啦。咁呢句説話呢。本身都係真確嘅喎，因為啱啱我先用呢個數據話俾大家聽，如果越敏感嘅話咧，嗰、那個距離就越近嘅。但係 C 呢句咧，都只不過係應用我哋所學嘅知識去分析下數據，從而得出嘅一個結論嚟嘅啫。佢亦都唔係一個假設嚟嘅，所以都係錯。而去到 D 啦，就喺呢個兩點嘅觸覺咧。應該係由兩個分開咗冇重疊到嘅觸覺感受器去產生比例嘅，咁呢個就真係對感應器嘅一個假設啦。個概念就係、是，如果呢個係我哋嘅皮膚，呢度有一個感受器，呢度有第二個感受器，咁如果啦，我同一時間刺激到佢哋兩點嘅。咁你咪會有一個兩點嘅觸覺囉。如果啦呢度呢竟然又有另一個感受器喎，佢哋極度近或者真係重疊咗嘅話啦，咁即使我只有一支針去吉到你嘅話啦，你仍然都會刺激到呢兩個嘅感受器，咁你就有機會呢都有一個兩點嘅觸覺，咁咪干擾咗呢個受試者嘅觸覺囉，咁咪錯咗囉。咁所以 D 啦，就係我哋嘅假設啦。啊，借呢個題目啦，亦都講解下有關於假設嘅概念啦。過往呢都有唔少題目呢，係問有關於假設嘅，睇都睇到啦。有關於假設呢，你見到蒸騰計係成日問嘅。咁所以啦，我就用返呢一條題目呢去做個理解咯。講翻啦，呢個 U 型嘅蒸騰計。啊，咁我要呢，就係測試下一棵植物嘅失水速度啦。咁但係啦，呢、這個水平面嘅改變呢，係因為棵植物吸水喎、哦。喂，你將吸水扮失水呀、啊？邊得㗎？唔緊要，題目就問啦，有冇一個假設喺背後去令到啦？即使呢個裝置真係測試緊嘅係吸水，但係都可以將佢化成一個失水嘅數字呢？咁都有㗎喎、哦。原來啦，我哋就係假設返一棵植物。
喺佢個身體入面，佢哋儲嘅水嘅份量係不變嘅。又或者好似呢條題目呢，當年佢就話啦，直接了當地做個假設，就係、是、代表住失水的速度就等於吸水的速度啦。如果你問我邊個阿心長係好啲嘅，我真係覺得第一個啦。雖然第二句呢，擺到明就係指鹿為馬㗎啦，不過佢都受到 DSE 嘅加持認證嘅，咁所以呢。都可以接受嘅，咁好簡單地講一句有關於個假設啦。通常呢，佢都係有關於我哋所測試嘅對象嘅，可能係一棵植物啦，可能今次啊呢個題目呢係個人啦，係咪？佢做咗啲嘢係我本身控制唔到嘅，但係佢亦都係會影響我嘅結果㗎。所以啦，我就要作出一個假設，去令我他日去作出結論嘅時候呢，就相對上個阻力就冇咁大啦，就好似呢個情況啦。如果嗰啲感受器真係有重疊到嘅，而我只係用個一點，即係頭先呢，我咪話間歇性地未用個零 mm 去刺激下個受試者嘅，我刺激佢嘅時候啊，佢同我講兩點，咁我就諗啦，阿陳生你係咪玩嘢呀？」我明明用緊一點去刺激你，你點解會感受到兩點㗎？咁我整個實驗係會俾人挑戰㗎咯喎，係咪？咁所以啦，我就唯有假定咗佢呢係冇一啲重疊嘅感受器。咁你話啦，成個皮膚點會冇重疊嘅感受器啊？係㗎，會有㗎。但你控唔控制到啊？你控制唔到㗎嘛？但係會唔會影響你嘅結果啊？會喎、啊，會唔會影響你嘅結論啊？又會喎、啊。咁點算啊？做個假設俾我先啦。So after we talk about the I V of the investigation, so we are going to talk about the aim of the investigation. The investigation was decided to show the density of the touch receptor of the skin. So what is the assumption of this investigation? So this question is checking us the relationship between the receptor density and the sensation. We need to understand the assumption made in the sensory physiology experiment. And also, we need to realize the aim of the experimental assumption and their implications. So let's take a look at the options one by one. Option A: the subjects do not cheat by picking out of the blindfold, so it should be the control measure. That's something. It should be like the precaution. You should tell the subject, Ah,、uh, Mr. Chen, don't cheat. Okay, please make it honest and tell me the result. So that's why it should not be the assumption. That's something you need to do before, and then you need you cannot just assume that oh, Mr. Chen, you are very honest person, so you do not cheat by picking out of the blindfold. That's not true. And then for option B, the fingertip is more sensitive than the other parts of the body. This statement is true itself. For the experiment, if we need to arrange the order for the sensitivity, number one is really the fingertip. And then palm of the hand, and then back of the hand, and then for the upper arm. So the fingertip is really the most sensitive one. However, it's just the observation. It's just the result. The result tell us this idea. So it is not the assumption. If we do this assumption, so somehow we have the result already. So somehow we have the conclusion. Before that, right? Or you can say that it could be the hypothesis, but it's never the assumption. And according to the sensitivity, number one is the fingertip. So how could be the result of this experiment for the two points discrimination test? So for the fingertip, it could be around two mm to make the person to feel that oh, I only feel one touch, and then for the palm around ten mm. And then for the back of the hand around twenty mm, and then for the upper arm is around forty mm. So you will see that what if the body part is more sensitive, the closer distance we can get it from the caliper. So for option C, and this idea is related to the option C. So for this statement is also true. However. Is still not the answer because it shows us how we apply the theory or our knowledge to analyze the data and draw the conclusion. So the distance is shorter. It means that the density of the touch receptor is higher. The idea is like that. For example, it's our skin, and then there are touch receptor, touch receptor, touch receptor, touch receptor. So the density very very high, right? So what if I do this the two point discrimination? Ah,、uh, firstly, or、uh, very far away, and then make it shorter, and then make it shorter, and then make it shorter. I can still feel two touch until the two points are very very close, and then they only 
stimulate one touch receptor and then i can tell you that oh only one touch right so for option d it is the answer the two touch sensation are produced by two separate touch receptors without overlapping so the idea is that for the skin touch receptor touch receptor so what if the caliper is like this i can stimulate two touch receptor but what about this and other touch receptor here overlapping the blue one and the red one and then i set the caliper as 0 mm only one touch right however it can stimulate two touch receptors so there will be two touch sensation so it will not be accurate right so it is the assumption I assume that there is no overlapping receptor. And I would like to grab this chance to talk about other questions about the assumption. Particularly, you will find that the assumption is about the potometer. So I use the potometer as the example. You can see this YouTube potometer. The potometer above is used to measure the rate of transpiration of a leafy shoot. However, the change of the water level is due to water uptake. So any assumption behind the use of this setup for measuring the rate of transpiration. So for the first assumption is the amount of the water retained in the plant is constant. Therefore, the amount of water uptake should be equal to the amount of water loss because there is no more water or no less water retained in the plants, right? So by choosing these two assumptions, I think number one is the better one. Second one is a bit tricky. How However, the second one is also recognized by the HKDAA, by the HKDSC. So the last idea about the assumption is always about the testing subjects, maybe the plants, maybe the animal, maybe the human being in this case. So that's something we cannot control. For example, the two touches sensation are produced by two separated touch receptors without overlapping. So can, can you say that in our skin, the touch receptors, they never overlap. You cannot say so. They may be overlapping, but you never know. But is it something you can control? You cannot control, right? But that's something you cannot control. It will affect your data and also affect you to draw the conclusion. Some other people will challenge you. Right? So I need to assume this case. Otherwise, once I use the 0 mm in the caliper to test it. Oh, Mr. Chen, how do you feel? And then he say that, oh, I feel two touch sensation. And then the whole experiment will be challenged by other people.